Everybody? Doing good? Bring some light, man. I'm old. I can't see. How's everybody doing? Good? Yes? How's everybody in the lounge? That's it. It's my boys in there. All right, listen, we got a full night. I'm going to try to do this with a microphone. This is hard for me. And what's really hard for me is trying to keep something short. Uh, the last couple of weeks, you know that Kyle has gotten up. And because of our love for you, we're trying to help you uh, in the area of financial stewardship. And so um, he's been sharing some things that it's been on his heart, some things that he and Jamie have learned in their crown ministry class. But tonight, Kyle is going to be bringing the word of God. And so I'm going to take his job tonight. And you know it's hard for me to go five minutes. So you need to pray for me, okay? A microphone in five minutes. Okay. So tonight I want to talk to you about something that I've mentioned before um, and kind of piggyback what Kyle had mentioned last week. Several times in the years, over the years, I've mentioned to you uh, in the area of giving uh, the section of Scripture in Malachi 3, uh, 8, 9, 10. If you're familiar with that, it's, it's talking about this Old Testament prophet. He's talking about that if you keep your tithes from the storehouse that you're under God's curse, but if you'll bring the tithe to the storehouse, he'll open up the windows of heaven and you won't be able to contain the blessing. You've heard this before. I've mentioned it before. And there's a lot of talk uh, in this church and other churches uh, when it comes to giving, tithing, offering, whatever you want to call it. There's a lot of talk. And I would like to clarify something for you tonight that might help you. And the reason I want to do that is because I love you and because I believe that God wants to use this church um, to bless our community and bless the world. And I'd like to see Eustace and the Golden Triangle uh, flourish. And so goes the city, so goes the church. So um, I want to talk about that. Malachi 3, 8, 9, and 10. Are we under a curse if we don't tithe, if we don't give 10% of our income? And people fight about that, whether it's off the top or net or gross, whatever, you do what you do. But I want to clarify some things. I want to point out to you that the Old Testament prophet Malachi was just that, an Old Testament prophet. And during his time, we were under God's law. And the law was that you brought 10%. But, however, things have changed. I will say this. Things have changed. We are no longer under the law. We are under grace. Okay? It starts out with you not deserving everlasting life due to your sin. But God, as you saw, gives it to you anyway because of his grace. You get that, right? Okay, let's go on. Do me a favor, and if you have a moment, look in the book of Galatians. The rest of this five minutes will be in the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 5. I'm just going to kind of take you through this little journey together. We're going to do this together, and hopefully it'll open up your awareness to some things. Galatians chapter 5, look at verse 18. Verse 18 says this, but when you are directed by the Spirit, when the, new, when, the, when the believer, when the person says yes to Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you, and then he is wanting to lead you and direct you in every decision of your life. Okay, so we get that. We assume this. I hope you all know it. If you don't, let me know. But the verse goes on. It says, but when you are directed by the Spirit, you are, no, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. Okay, you're not under the obligation, of the law of Moses. Go over to five one. Five one says this: Who in the house is a believer? Don't be ashamed to say you're a follower of Jesus Christ. Okay, show your hand. Okay, if you are a Christian, right? So Christ has truly set us free. That's a good place for an amen. Okay, awesome, good crowd. Now make sure that you stay free. You've been set free. From the law, right? That's what it said in 18. You've been set free from the law. You're not under obligation to the law. And you've been set free. Now make sure that you stay free. See, that's God has done his first part. He has freed you from the obligation of the law. Now it's our job to stay free from the law. And don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. 
Okay, that's, I want you to understand that. Now look at verse 25 of the same chapter. You there? Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Every part. We are no longer under the obligation of the law to knock 10% off your income and put it into the box at the door, the computer, the basket, whatever. You are no longer under this obligation. What you are is under grace. Grace says, you don't deserve to be saved, I save you anyway. You don't even deserve to be loved, I love you anyway. And grace says, thank you, Jesus. I want to give because I love you. That's what grace is. See, I believe in the Holy Spirit of God. I really do. I believe in the Father. We sing a song around here, don't we? I believe in God the Father. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the Holy Spirit. We all sing that, right? Do you, do you believe in the Holy Spirit? This is what I believe. I believe we need to stop paying attention to this law of tithe. And I believe in the Holy Spirit. And I believe that if we'll do as the Bible says and let the Holy Spirit lead us in every part of our lives, if we will take time to pray and ask this Spirit of God to convict us, it says that the Holy Spirit will convict us of sin, right? If you're not giving what you should, that's sinful. He'll convict you of it, right? If, and and he'll also, he also, it also says that he convicts us and leads us to truth, Right? So if you're given the wrong amount, he'll tell you. And if you're given the right amount, it's because he told you. Do, you. do you get what I'm saying? So I believe in the Holy Spirit. And I believe that if we would actually take time before these guys come up, I want you to forget what you thought you were going to give tonight. And I want you to pray. And I want you to just stop. And we're just going to be quiet for a moment. And I want you to pray. And I believe that if we do this every single week, if we pray and ask the Spirit of God to lead us and to tell us how we could give, I'm telling you, he will talk to you. Like, you read, you, who reads the Bible in here, right? Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand, because you might not, right? In the Bible, we pick up this book, right? And we read these amazing stories about how God spoke to his people. And we're like, wow, that's awesome. He'll do the same thing right now. I want, I want to have, I want to have Pentecost experiences. I want to have Red Sea experiences where, where God talks to Moses, where Moses actually has a conversation, and God talks to him. He's the same God. He'll do the same thing. So if we'll just stop and let the Spirit guide us in everything, that means giving. And I believe with all my heart in the Holy Spirit that he will guide us. And when we all, if we would all, week in and week out, and I believe this for every church that Jesus Christ is the pastor of, if we will pray, if these people will pray and ask him, Lord, how do you want me to give? I believe if you genuinely ask him, that Holy Spirit of God will tell you what to give. And I believe with all my heart that if you will be obedient to that number, even if it's less than 10%, if you will give that, not only will this church have more than enough to survive, but we will have more than enough to go out and see the Golden Triangle flourish for Jesus. I believe that. Do you guys believe that? Honestly believe that. Come on. Come on. So let's do that. And gentlemen, if you could come up, please. And then you give. But please, just, I, and I'm telling you, it, it's okay if it's less than 10%. Trust the Holy Spirit of God. Trust him. Talk to him. Ask him what to give. And then I, I just ask you, as your brother in Christ, I love you. Be obedient. Don't stifle the Holy Spirit of God. Let him move. Listen and then obey. Let's pray. Lord God, I, uh, I thank you that we are no longer under law. I thank you for your son Jesus I thank you that for all of us who have embraced him as Lord and Savior, we are free. And who the Son sets free is free indeed. We are no longer subject and obligated to the law that just, did, just pointed out our sin anyway. Lord, I don't believe that we're cursed if we don't give 10%. But I do believe that the principle does apply. For those of us that don't give generously, who don't listen to the leading of your Spirit, 
your greatest blessing is not upon them. I know you, God, I know you well enough that you don't bless unfaithfulness. You bless faithfulness. So I'm gonna just ask you now, Lord, as we just get quiet for just a moment before the men go forth to take this offering, Lord, you would, you would tell each person in this church right now what they are to give into your kingdom. And I pray, Lord, that your spirit would move mighty over their heart and that they would be obedient. I know there's some in the room right now already, I can just sense it, that are already stubbornly saying no. Lord, I pray you break that wall down. Speak to your people, just like you did in the scriptures. Speak to them, Lord. No fake church, real deal right now. Speak to your people. Help them obey. In Jesus' name.